Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're diving into the second part of our D5 render series. In this video, we'll explore D5's predefined materials, I'll show you how to use them and how to tweak them to fit your project. We'll also take it a step further and look at how to import external PBR materials into D5 to really push the quality of your renders. Let's get started. If you haven't seen part 1 of this series yet, we started by importing our Rhino model into D5. I recommend checking that out first so you can follow along better. Link is below. So without further ado, let's jump right into materials. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is to check out the predefined materials inside D5 Render. Let's go ahead and connect this model to D5 Render by clicking in here. Alright, and now that we are here, we can have a look at all of the predefined materials that D5 Render has by going into Assets. We can either click on Assets or press the M key on the keyboard which is its shortcut. I'm just going to be pressing M. Make sure that you are on the Material tab. And if you cannot see the menu, you just need to go to these three lines right here. So just click on them. And in this case, the first thing that I want to do is to apply the materials to my sidewalk. And as you can see, D5 Render has all of these materials well organized. So I'll just jump into Outdoor Ground and then go to floor tiles. And most of the assets from the floor tiles are actually free, so that's actually really good for us. You can go ahead and pick any material that you want from the sidewalk. In my case, I'll go for this one, Exterior Paving 103, and to grab it, the only thing that we have to do is to click on this download icon, wait for it to download, then in order to grab it, you will be wanting to click on this green arrow right here, and because we already have the correct UBW mapping and material for our sidewalk, we just need to click once and the material will automatically be applied to this object. And while we are at it, we can start applying materials to every single object of our 3D model. So now I'll jump into the curbs. Let's go into concrete and let me just slide this to the left side and make it a tiny little bit smaller. If you want to have the preview of each material bigger or slightly smaller, you can go into these three dots where you're going to be finding the thumbnail size. So we have small, and this will let us go through all of the materials pretty quick. And we also have large, in case you have a small screen, you'll be able to see this a little bit more clear. In my case, I'll just stick to the medium-sized thumbnail, and I'm going to look for a pretty dark concrete so that I can use it for my curves. And we can go for this rough concrete number 10, which I have already downloaded. So I can just click once on this green check mark and apply it to my curves. And as you can see, it kind of blends in with the color of my sidewalk. So what I want to do is to use a more darker tone. And we have reached the pro section and that I want to be here just now. So let's go back up here. Yeah, let's go ahead and use the rough modeled concrete. I'm going to be downloading it first and then apply it to my curves. Didn't make much difference, but no worries. We'll be going through the settings in just a bit. Now let's go for the asphalt. This time we can just go ahead into the search bar and type in asphalt. I'm going to go for Asphalt All 2, grab it again by clicking once on this green icon and apply it to my road. We are not going to be applying the material for grass just yet because I want to show you something before we do that. Now let's actually go to our project. We are going to be leaving it as white, but obviously we want to add some detail. So what I want to use for it is probably this kind of material, a lightweight concrete. So grab it again and apply it. We will be fixing this repetition of the texture in just a bit, so don't worry about it. Now let's jump into the window frames. So let's go to metals, and I'll probably go for this black matte metal. Obviously you can go ahead and grab whichever you want, so again, let's grab it and apply it like so. And last but not least, let's give some material to our city blocks. So again, let me scroll down and go into the outdoor ground where we have the floor tiles. In this case, I'm going to be using maybe this exterior paving so we can get a little bit of extra contrast right here. Let's check this. Okay, and there we go. All right, now let's jump into windows and grass. And now, because I want to select the object of my scene, I'm going to go to this list. We'll have the 3D model, which is called D5 Render Series 3D model. Click it once, and then I'll just click on the grass. Now, an interesting thing about D5 Render is that up here, we have the material template. In this case, because this is going to be grass, I'm going to click once in here, 
and we actually have a template for grass. And there we go. And this is very helpful because in other 3D software, we would need to go through some settings in order to end up with this kind of look. Now I see that's a bit too high. And fortunately for us, we have the height parameter on the right side. So we can lower it a little bit, maybe to zero. We also have the trim option. So if I increase it like so, we can give this grass a different look to it. Maybe we can leave it at around 0 0.3 so that we can have an extra variation on it. We also have the blend amount. And if I lower it, it's actually going to be blending in with the actual material of the grass. That's why it's changing color a bit. And this looks a bit more natural. We also have the normal map, which is actually the relief of each material. And we don't actually need to apply the normal map because the detail of each grass is so tiny that it's barely visible. Specular will increase the intensity of the brightness of the reflections from our grass. So as you can see, now it's at zero, but if I go all the way to one, you'll see that the reflections are brighter. I think this is a little bit too much, so we can reduce it and have it something around 0.4 maybe. And the roughness will control the amount of reflections that each material has. So at one, we are going to be basically having zero reflections. But if I go all the way down, you can see that we have increased the amount of reflections. And this has given us an unnatural result. So we can go ahead and leave it as one. We will be able to see these parameters better when we start working with other materials. So let's leave it like that for the moment. Now let's jump into the glass. So in this case, I'll be changing it from custom to transparent, whereas you can see this is for the glass material. So let's click on it once. And I'm not really a fan of this type of color. So let's change its base color from this bluish tone to a grayish one. Or maybe we can go ahead and make it a little bit darker like so. For glass, usually 1.52 in the refraction level is totally fine. We already know what specular is. But again, it's the level of brightness of the reflection. So if I take it all the way up here, you'll see that that brightness, it's a little bit too much now. So we can go ahead and lower it a little bit to around 0.4 maybe, or actually 0.2. We do want some thickness on our glass. So if you are only using a surface for the glass, this will be a good idea to add some thickness to it. And you can see that this looks a little bit better. Again, the roughness measures the amount of reflection of the material. And obviously glass, it's reflective. And I really don't want this, therefore I'll be setting it as zero. The opacity is for the transparency of the material. So if I increase it, we can see that this is no longer transparent and we can actually leave it at around 0.35, for example. We can change it later on. So let's not worry about it too much right now. Okay, now let's jump into the materials of our tilings on our sidewalk. And for us to see this a little bit better, I'm going to be changing the sunlight's angle by going into the Geo Sky tab. Let's grab the sunlight and move it all the way over here. Something around this point should do. Okay, now again, grab the sidewalk. All right, let's start with the base color. So if I click here once, and let's say that I want a red tint on it, I'll just go ahead and move this to the right side. And you'll see that we have changed its color, but this doesn't look good at all. So we can bring it all the way back here and we can actually lower it so that we can have a little bit more of contrast between our curbs and our sidewalk. And there we go. Now, as for specular, we already know what this does. If I increase it, you'll see that the reflections become brighter. And if I decrease it, the reflections will become darker. Let's leave it at around 0.5 because it looks a little bit better. And let's actually change the camera a little bit to this right side where we can see the reflections from our sunlight. Okay, roughness it's set as one. So that means if I go ahead and lower it to zero, you'll see that we get a little bit more of reflections. And this actually gives the impression that the flooring is wet. So we can use this trick to create that effect. However, in this case, having it at around 0.85 will probably work for us. We don't have an opacity map, obviously because we don't want our sidewalk to be transparent. So that doesn't make any sense. Moving on, uh, this is not a metallic material. So having this without a map and set as zero is going to be enough. While ambient occlusion will give an extra shadow in the areas where objects are close to each other. For example, in these tiny separations. Now ambient occlusion is not gonna be that visible right here because if I go to the base color map, we have a map specifically for this material where we already have these dark shadows already drawn on this map. So the difference between base color and base color map 
is that in here we can change the appearance of the actual map or the actual color of the material, which is this texture. So the only difference between base color and base color map is that the color map changes from the actual texture to the base color of it. The rest, such as normal, specular, roughness, opacity, and so on, are still the same as you can see. And last but definitely not least, we've got the height. So height is actually the displacement map. So if I increase it, you'll see that the detail of the floor becomes more noticeable. But this is a little bit too much because it, now it looks kind of weird. So let's lower it and leave it as it was. So that was 0 0.15. All right, great. Now let's fix some of the repetition that we can see in here. So it is more noticeable on our street and on our actual project up here. So if I, for example, grab the street and scroll all the way down here, we will see that the UV randomizer option has appeared. So if I check it, it's gonna help us randomize each texture and the repetition is gone. Now this option will only appear on these type of materials. For example, if I go back to my sidewalk, that option is not here because we can't actually spot any repetitions, meaning that this flooring texture is a seamless one. I'm going to go now to my project where we can actually spot repetition again and we can see that now this option is available again because this is not a seamless texture. So let's add the UV randomizer option and now that repetition is gone. And quick note before we move on, if you want to download the full D5 scene file I'm working on or the original Rhino model, you can grab them on my Patreon. It's a great way to support the series and it gives you everything to follow along more easily. Links below if you want to check it out. Let's keep going. All right, so we have been through some of the predefined materials in D5 Render. But what if we needed some other kind of materials that we cannot find inside this render engine? So if that's the case, we can jump into another website which has high quality PBR materials for free. And what is PBR? It's physically based rendering. Now don't get me wrong, D5 already has PBR materials. Why? Because if I again select this floor tiling, we can spot that this is a PBR material because it has texture maps for every single parameter, such as the base color texture, the normal, which is the relief, the roughness, ambient occlusion, and the height maps. So these are already good materials. But if we needed some other kind of textures, we can jump into websites such as ambientcg.com. And their library is huge, as it has more than 2,500 assets. But the ones that we are looking for are the PBR surfaces. So let's jump into this section. So I'm actually going to be trying out a different material for all of the objects on our project. So for our sidewalk, I'm going to jump into this one. And in here, we can either download the JPEG version or the PNG version. So one thing about resolution, as you can see, the 2K version is 60 megabytes on the PNG category, while the 4K is 245 megabytes, which is quite a bit. So if we start using 4K textures for every single object, this scene is going to end up being super heavy. So what I recommend is to use only 4K textures for the materials or the objects that are going to be close to our camera. In this case, the sidewalk is probably going to be close to our camera on almost every shot so i'm going to go for the 4k version now which one should we use should we use jpeg or png i will recommend going to the png as it's going to be preserving the details a lot better than the jpeg version so let me just click once here and it's going to be downloading automatically you can go ahead and save it wherever you want and as you can see these are compressed files so i'm going to right click and in my case i use winrar to extract them so which ones do we need we need the ambient occlusion texture, we need the color texture, displacement, and what's the difference between normal DX and normal GL? Now, some softwares such as Unreal Engine and Blender use normal GL, but in the case of D5 Render, it uses normal DX. So we can safely go ahead and delete the normal GL so that we don't get confused. Now these are only there for references, so I can go ahead and grab all of them and delete them. And let's jump back into D5 Render. So how can we import these high quality textures? We just need to grab the object, make sure that you are on the Inspector tab, and up here, D5 Render actually has this option called Batch Import PBR Textures, which is great. It saves us a lot of time. All right, so the only thing that we have to do is to grab all of the textures, 
and click on open and as easy as that now this looks a little bit weird and why does it look a bit weird because our height map is too high so grab the height map and reduce it okay let's move in closer and it doesn't matter how much i zoom in you'll see that all of the details still look really good let's increase the height a little bit more so something that looks a bit more natural going to go to this other side instead of using this lighter you can just double click on it and add the value that you want in my case 0 0.04 all right this looks a little bit better than the one that we had before now we can go ahead and grab some other textures for our asphalt so let's go back into ambient cg and i'm going to be typing in asphalt so let me go ahead and check this one out maybe one that's a bit more darker and maybe with some imperfections on it we can try this one. In this case, I think it would be safe for us to go for a 2K version. And let's erase all of these. Again, we just need to go ahead into D5 render. Select our street by double clicking on it. Then go into the batch import PBR textures option. Let's go into streets. Now, if I zoom out, I'm going to check if we have any repetitions. And we don't, which is great because I think we already have the UV randomizer turned on and we do. So the first thing that I notice is that it's a little bit too reflective and we can reduce the specular a little bit so that those reflections are not that pronounced. Also, I think it's a little bit too dark so we can go ahead and change its base color to something more lighter. Now I think we need also a little bit more of detail on it. And for that, I can go into the normal map and increase it a little bit to, yeah, around one. Now, if I lower the ambient occlusion now, you'll see the difference. So if I increase it, we can get some extra shadows from the cracks, as you can see. So we can leave it around 0.5 maybe. So before we wrap up part 2 of our D5 render series, I want to change the lighting a little bit. And for this, I'll simply go to the HDRI tab. And HDRI is pretty much the environment light, which in most cases gives us a more realistic look. And the crazy thing about D5 Render is that if I press on this arrow, we're going to be getting some free quality HDRIs. The one that I'll be using, it's going to be Cloudy O2. And down here, we can set up the intensity of this HDRI. So if I increase this value, you will see that it gets a little bit brighter. Something around this point should do. Now the grass looks too green, so let me go ahead and grab it. And I'm going to select the base color now and desaturate it a little bit more while making it darker. And there we go, we have applied the materials. That's it for today's video. If you found it helpful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next part of the series. In the next episode, we'll be looking at how to import 3D assets into D5 Render. You won't want to miss it. Thanks for watching and see you soon.